Hi everyone, it's your girl Felicia. Hi Felicia! It's cake day today and I will be making one of my favorites and it is a pound cake. You can make this cake throughout the year, no matter what time or even for a great birthday. I have a recipe that stands above all the other recipes that I have made with pound cakes and I have made many different ones. This recipe is not only delicious, it's buttery, moist, and it has those little crumbly crusts on top that I know everybody loves and enjoy. And I know it will be one of your family favorites as well. I want to share this recipe with you. So, let's get to it. Okay, starters. This cake will require for you to use a very kind of special sugar. And some may know it as super fine sugar. And it can also be named as a caster sugar. This sugar is super fine and it will make your cake extra delicious. And the first thing you want to do, you make sure you have a 12 cup button pan. And you also want to make sure that you spray your butt pan with some baking spray. And set your oven at 300 degrees, not 350, but 300 degrees. So I'm going to get ready and mix these ingredients up together. And so I'm going to start off with the one half cup of butter. The recipe will be down below. So that's three sticks. And I'm going to add my sugar. And that's going to be three cups of sugar. So I got this already measured out. And you're going to use your paddle attachment. Okay, just make sure it's on good. And you want to mix this for at least seven minutes. You want to make sure you mix it up good. And you're going to have the speed on a medium high. So I'm going to start this off slow mixing it first. I don't want the sugar everywhere. Let me plug this up. Forgot to plug it up. So I want all my sugar coming out. Alexa, set timer for seven minutes. Good afternoon, Felicia. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. So, turn up on medium high. So after the seven minutes is done, I will be back. Okay, I'm back. Y'all, you know trial and error be happening. Sometimes when you be baking and you forget something and forgot to do something. I forgot to add my um <clears throat> cream cheese in. You want to make sure that cream cheese is room temperature. Make sure your cream cheese is added with your butter and your sugar. Add that in together. I have the, the um, instructions in that box, but I had to add it in and just remix it, whip it back up. I did it for additional four minutes, but I just want to share that with you all, but it will still be delicious because of the fact I haven't added anything else with it. You want to just make sure, <clears throat> make sure it is fluffy, so mine's had to... Spend more than seven minutes, but it's from five to eight. But make sure you don't forget to add that in. Okay, next we're going to do, we're going to add in our room temperature eggs. The recipe is going to require for six eggs, but four are going to be the whole eggs, and then the other two are going to be just the egg yolk. So, I'm going to add these in, and I want to make sure that... I do one at a time to make sure I don't have any eggshells. 
I'm going to add this in. And you make sure you're going to beat it on low one at a time. Just until that yellow disappears. And so I'm going to add this first additional in. Put this on low. So that yellow disappeared. And then you want to scrape the sides down. Then I'm going to add in my next egg. Checking, making sure no eggshells. ahead and crack my next egg. This is a really good cake, everybody. It's really, really that good. Because all the yellow is gone. And I want to scrape the side of the bowl down. With that super fine sugar, I purchased mine online. They don't sell it in the store. They used to sell it in one particular store. I get it, but they don't sell it anymore. Um... I order my alpha line, alpha line, and it's called a casting sugar, a super fine sugar. It's almost feel like something very silky. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add in our egg yolks. So you wanna make sure they're at room temperature as well, but not to half and half. So you're gonna add in your egg yolks, that's two. A quarter cup of half and half. And then you're going to add in your um, vanilla extract. I use the purr. You don't have to, but. It's two teaspoons, not one. Correction. And we're going to beat this on low as well until it's mixed in. Okay, this is mixed in. And now we're going to go to our next step. Okay, I have three cups of flour, 
and you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt and you're just gonna whisk this together And once you got that whisk good, now you're going to get ready to add this to your batter. Okay, we're going to add in our flour mixture, the flour and salt mixture with our batter. And you want to add it in at three additional times. And you want to beat this at a low speed. So that'll be my first portion. So I'm going to add the second. addition or portion number two make sure on low speed you get the sides of the scrape the sides down sometimes I try to get the bottom to make sure that batter is mixed in well Mix it again. And this is number three. Sometimes you can just get flour just like you try to be so careful and then all of a sudden flour to waste it somewhere. And now I'm going to make sure this is mixed well. You don't want to overly mix it, but make sure it is mixing well. Okay, I'm ready to pour this in this pan, this butt pan. Make sure it's a 12 cup. The only thing that I don't too much care about when I'm trying to use these pans is like, try to make sure you get that better. Not trying to get it on the side of the pan. I don't know if any of you all um, like that part. So I try to give it these spoons all the way around. Look, all the way on the side. So this how I try to do mine. When I'm filling it in, and I just try to scoop it all around even.
And I just want to tell you, um, just in case you don't have any half and half, one day I didn't have any, and um, I had to use a substitute. And if you got some milk and some heavy whipping cream, that's all you need. And so um, I will, um, all you have to do is have like <clears throat> three, four cup of whole milk and a quarter cup of that heavy whipping cream. And you mix that together. And voila, you have you your half and half. So I'm going to finish putting this on. Let me go ahead and finish. So you can just see how <clears throat> I put mine in there. And I got icing off. I'm going to get that icing off. I mean, not icing. Batter. No, we ain't got no icing in here. And I have got to, I won't be cutting this cake because it's going to be for someone. And this cake has got to get shipped. Shipping this pound cake. And I'm going to freeze it. When I get if I think it cool down, I'm freezing it, <coughs> and then pack it well, ship it overnight, so they can get it the next day, because you want somebody to have a fresh baked cake. So I will be shipping this tomorrow. Somebody probably said, that's my cake she was making. I'm trying to make sure I get all my little stuff on there. Ain't gonna be able to get all of it. And I want to get this cake batter put around so it won't be burning in the oven. But make sure your oven is on 300 degrees. We so used to putting it on 350 and it's going to bake in the oven for an hour and a half. And for my oven, because it don't have a whole lot of space, it's big, but it's not to center it, so for to this cake gonna be in the um, pound cake gonna be in the oven for an hour and a half. I put my, you know, you have a center rack where you do all your baking. I recommend you to take it just a one little step lower. Just when you use the bacon in the middle rack, take it one step lower. That's for me because I have made this cake plenty of time, and by me keeping it in the middle rack, it start browning so quick, and it have to stay in the oven. For at least an hour and a half to an hour and 30 minutes, depending on your the way your oven is, what kind you have, whether it's conventional or whatever kind of oven you have. But for me, it's an hour and 20 minutes. And so anytime I do my baking, I also I always time it. If if you ever come across a recipe and it say one hour, I would drop it down to like five minutes less. Or I just say 50 minutes and then see how it's baking and then if they need that extra 10 minutes then I add it you know you always want to make sure you don't want your cake to be dry you don't want to be undercooked and so you can also do that toothpick taste test but do it when it's the cake is almost done because you don't want your cake to fall so I'm going to put this in the oven and I'll be back when it's done one hour and 20 minutes later, exactly. Now I'm going to let this cool. 
because I have got to ship this cake off tomorrow. But I'm going to let it cool down at least 15 minutes, a little longer probably. And I will flip it out. And then I'm going to let it cool all the way down. And it's going to go in the fridge some. And then I'm going to wrap it. Wrap it tightly. And then I'm going to freeze it. So I can ship this cake off tomorrow. So I had to flip this cake out. And you see the crunchies? I got to wrap this cake really tight. I had to use some lunar foil, another cake board to make sure I flip it back over right. And so now I got to wrap this with surround wrap and some lunar foil. And make sure it's together. So whenever he do get it, it gonna, it's not going to fall apart, but the crunchies supposed to be like that. And so I had to put these back on there. And that's it. It's a delicious cake. I'm going to see. Can I zoom in on a little bit more? So that's it. So try this cake. It's very delicious and buttery. And your family will love. Well, that's it for today. I was glad to share this old-fashioned southern pound cake with you all. And I hope you get a chance to make it for your family or just for yourself. And if you would like to have this recipe, just look down below in the description box. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And anytime that I might stream live or upload a video, just hit that notification bell. And as always, have a blessed and wonderful day. This is your girl, Felicia. Bye.